Hi Pico Brewers, Annie Johnson here. Today I'm going to show you how to use your modified immersion chiller to chill your wort. We've had a lot of questions on the forums on how to streamline this process, how to make it more efficient. So I'm going to show you how I do it here at Pico Brew. So here I have the immersion chiller and on the forums you saw how to do it yourself or if you buy one, it can be copper or stainless steel and your temperature silicone tubing and then you have on your hose clamped beverage ball lock connector and then the other end is open. So here I have a really great batch of porter I just brewed and the alarm has sounded. I've silenced the alarm so this is my chance now where I actually hook up the chiller and I'm going to run some wort through it so I can sanitize it. So always be sure that after you use your chiller each time that you've rinsed it and it's blown dry. So it's feather light. So I just go ahead and set that on the counter and I'm going to take off the inline hose in the back. But I want to leave the filter on. I can go ahead and detach that from the keg and then I can just set this off to the side when I clean later. Good snap, all my pieces are secured. So I can go ahead and push start. And what that's going to do is cycle the boiled wort through the chiller. In the meantime, I have two buckets that I use and I have them both filled with groundwater temperature water. I like to use buckets of water so I don't use so much ice. If I use three buckets of water, then I can use one seven pound bag of ice and I can chill down to about 65 degrees. So I'm gonna show you how that happens. So right now, the Zymatic is circulating and it's going through the chiller and I can feel as well as see because I have a dark beer, but if you have a light beer, it doesn't matter. Feel the hoses. It's better to feel the hoses than the copper because the copper's hot. So once it processes through, you can see it just takes about 45 seconds, maybe a minute. If you don't feel comfortable, go two minutes. Any more than two minutes it is, it really doesn't matter because it's already sanitized as soon as that hot wort hits the inside of the copper. So now that I have it all the way through, I've felt my hoses, I know it's recirculating. I just go ahead and pick it up and I put it into the water. There we go. Maybe it's better to have a rag when you do that. <laughs> I'll get one. And then I just go ahead and I watch and I'm cooling down and my target is 67. Right now I've got it at 168. Occasionally if you like to whirlpool the water you can do that. But when it starts to get warm and you'll feel it, then you go ahead, take out the chiller, and then use your second bucket of water. Okay, I've already exchanged it once. So I'm ready to go with my third bucket of groundwater temperature water. I have a rag this time because it's not, a rag is a good thing or a kitchen towel. And then go ahead and whirlpool that. And then you can fill up the fourth bucket about a third of the way with water. And then we'll put our chiller in it and then we'll empty a seven pound bag of ice. I have my chiller in my third bucket of groundwater temperature water and now I have a bucket that has about a third of the way or a quarter of the way of just water. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up my chiller and deposit that into my bucket and I'm going to take a seven pound bag of ice and put it right down the center. Then I have a spoon that I use. I like to whirlpool. I don't constantly whirlpool, but every few minutes, I just give it a nice few stirs. As the water begins to uh, get uh, warmer and the ice begins to melt, it's good just to give it a stir to distribute the, 
the, uh, the heat that's coming off the chiller more with the cold water and the ice. And then I'm watching, I've already dropping down. I'm about 17 minutes in and I'm about to 80 degrees. And I'm only going to 67. I wanna let you know that it takes about 10 minutes for the entire volume of wort to pass through the zymatic. So when the desired temperature hits, the counter will start. It'll count down for 10 minutes and that account uh, for an entire pass through of the wort so you have a stable temperature. So keep in mind though, sometimes you'll stir it and the temperature will go down, but then if you walk away and come back, it may have gone up a couple of degrees. This happens as the wart goes through. So you want to make, to get an accurate reading, it needs to make a complete pass through. So don't, I don't want you to rely on a false reading. So that's why I tell you the process takes anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes. So you can see now we're at about 18 minutes and we're down into the mid 70s. The wart's chilled to 67. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and just show you how to push out the remaining wort that's in the wort chiller. You could disconnect it at this point, but um, it's quite a bit and, uh, and it's a good, it's better to keep it. It's a good pint and a half or two pints, so you might as well. So the drain has completed 10 minutes. Keep in mind always if you want to end something prematurely or go to the next step, you just push in the encoder and go through the steps and you can either exit the brew or hit continue. I hit exit the brew. So I go ahead and we go to the main menu and we're going to the help. And then I'm going to take off the chiller end, put it in my keg cleaning wand. Remember they're universal so it doesn't matter which one you pick up. I've got help so I go ahead and push help. I'm going to get to circulate and what this is going to do is both pumps are working so it's going to push out the wart, run it through the machine and deposit it in the keg. I know that this is happening because if I wanted to listen, I could hear it sucking up. And then also because I have a dark beer, I can see it going through the tubes. It doesn't matter if you have a light beer, you'll see it. You can also look for it in your sample port through way and then you can see it and I pretty much want to stop it when I just see nothing but foam pushing through then I know the process is complete but the whole point is to empty the chiller and this is the same way that you'll do it when you're cleaning it you always want an empty chiller when you're storing it so it's going through now it's almost complete I can see that it's completely empty out of the chiller. I'm getting just a little bit of foam, but that's okay. And then it's starting to go in spurts. And I also look here and I can see that the drain level is very low. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it. And all I have to do to, to end it is push it in once and it exits and I'm done. Now I can detach both hoses and the chiller and I can go ahead and start my cleanup. What I like to do at this point is just disconnect it, pitch my yeast, and put my fermenter to bed, and then go ahead and carry on with my cleaning. Thanks for watching.